He's angry about mortgages. It's Angry Mortgage. He's swearing. He's cursing loud. He's old. He's opinionated. And he's been doing this so damn long. This program is about mortgages, and this is mortgage advice, but the advice may not apply to your situation. Contact licensed mortgage professionals for specific recommendations before you make decisions about mortgages. You may not agree with Ron, but if you don't, uh, he thinks you're wrong. Oh, and did we say there is a lot of swearing? Angry Mortgage is on the air. Back again and extremely angry. Very angry, angry at uh, mortgages in general, um, high interest rates in particular. Yeah, so we've gone through, uh, by the time when you're watching this podcast, the Bank of Canada announcement will be about a week old. Uh, it did go up, obviously. Uh, Bank of Canada, new Bank of Canada rate, 5%. 15 months ago, a quarter of 1%, 15 months ago quarter of 1%. Now, all the banks, all financial institutions add 2.2. So when we see 5% from the Bank of Canada, that's that's the rate they lend money to banks at. You know, that's the rate, that's their theoretical rate that they create to manage the economy. But nobody gets that rate except you know, maybe, you know, a bank gets that rate if they want to borrow some money. Yeah, I don't think the normal, their everyday mortgage consumer they'd think okay it's at five percent that's not too bad no bitch you're paying what 7.25 nobody's walking up to that bank of canada building hey hey i want to talk to a i want to talk to a customer service rep see about getting that five percent yeah that ain't happening no, no that ain't happening so uh 7.2 is the new commercial bank prime is the phrase we use mm -hmm. and typically when you borrow at People borrow at prime. A few lucky people get it right at prime. Mm -hmm. Most people borrow at prime plus a half for their prime. So that's 7.7 .7 mm -hmm. for your home equity line of credit, referred to as a HELOC. That always shakes people up when I say HELOC. They say, wait, what is that? What do you mean? HELOC? It sounds vicious. What is it? Where, what are you locking me what you, into? Oh, my God, a HELOC. But it's <laughs> a home equity line of credit. So the lien, the loan, the line of credit is registered on your house. Mm -hmm. So as opposed to a personal line of credit, which is just, we hope on you'll your pay. Person. We hope the yeah. fuck you'll pay. You yeah. know, that's it. We just hope the fuck you'll you pay. You don't pay okay? HELOC and they will come and take they will come. your house. They will come for you. If you they, will, they, will, they have leverage on you. Yeah. Yes. For the, but that's why the rate's low. Like a personal line of credit, typically a personal line of credit, prime plus four, mm. prime plus three, prime plus six, prime, but like prime plus a lot. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and uh, on the HELOC, Prime plus a half a percent, so seven point seven. Now that rate was two point nine five just fifteen months ago. So okay. crazy. So if you have a HELOC and you used it, let's say you used it, you made a down payment on a rental property, you renovated your whatever, mm -hmm. you did something with it, and you have a hundred thousand dollar balance. So the minimum payment on a HELOC is. The interest that month, like whatever accumulated of interest that month. So if you had a hundred grand, it was at two point nine five. So that's uh, call it three grand of interest a year divided by twelve. Not a big number, right? No, no. Now it's nearly eight thousand dollars of interest a year on the same thing. So much, much bigger number. Yeah, because it doesn't matter what you locked in at or signed at. No, no, locked no, in no. At, it, the, it no. fluctuates with prime. Yeah, contract says it floats. Contract yeah. says it's a float. By the way, it's also demand loan. A lot of people don't realize that about their HELOC. It's a demand loan. The bank can ask their money back any time. Now, mortgage is not. Now, this is the great... People sometimes, you know, mortgage is kind of a commonplace item and people don't think about the rules of the contract very much. The beauty of the mortgage is it's a bilateral contract, which means that both parties have responsibilities, but both parties can't fuck with each other. Okay? Yeah. If you make your mortgage payments... They can't fuck with you. They can't do nothing. They can't do nothing. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now you've got to keep your home insurance in place. You've got to pay your property taxes. You've got to do a couple of things. Mm -hmm. You can't tear the place down. There's without obligations. The, there's to obligations. The loan. Yeah. But here's the thing: you can lose your job. You can be in financial hardship. You can get in trouble on your credit. As long as you make those mortgage payments, you're a okay. And you know what? 
the bank will offer you renewal. Now, if you've got terrible credit rating, they're going to offer you a slightly higher renewal rate for mm-hmm. sure. But it's a bilateral contract. The bank can't do anything. The bank can't change the contract. We'll get to that a little bit later. Bank can't change the contract. Bank can't tell you, call the loan. You can't, cannot, cannot say you need to pay me now. Nope, we got to wait for the whole five years is up. Yeah. So it's got some protection for the consumer because these products, the the way they're built and the, the laws around them, they're like hundreds of years old, really. Like they're old law. Mm-hmm. So it's it's fair to the consumer. Now if the they broke, don't fix it. <laughs> yeah, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Do not fix this thing because yeah. we want fairness to the consumer. So the home equity line of credit, though, it's a demand loan. If you could actually get a crazy experience, that because the bank could do anything with it. Mm-hmm. Bank could do anything with it. Bank could say, okay, you got a two hundred thousand dollar limit. You've used forty. I see you've used forty. You're paying on it. Yeah, no, we're gonna take your limit away. You're down to the forty. Oh, that's it. No, don't have to give a reason. Well, they can do that on credit cards too. They can change they it at any that. time. Yeah, they're demand anytime. loans. They are demand loans. Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, big, there's usually a good reason. Okay. Uh, but they're demand loans. They can do anything they want. So, oh, by the way, that's this is an interesting, interesting thing that happened this week. Really interesting. So, the bank regulator, who is OSFI, the Office of the Superintendent of Financial Institutions, mm-hmm. that is the entity that regulates all federally licensed banks, trusts, yeah. you name it. Okay. And also licenses the mortgage insurers like CMHC, Sagen, mm-hmm. Canada Guarantee. It's their regulator. So they've been thinking about what's been going on in the housing market for a lot. They've got, a, they, they told it every, back in the in the late winter, like in Feb, January, February, they announced they were going to do a major Re- re-examination of their rules under B20. I won't bother you with all that crap because... Yeah, there was a bunch of rumors that things were going to change. And it's not a rumor. They, yeah. they, 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 they said, we're going we're gonna to investigate this stuff. We're going to... Mm-hmm. We invite stakeholders in. Now, stake, what's a stakeholder? Stakeholder is who they regulate, right? Mm-hmm. Now, they also do let in some public policy people, but they just go strictly academic. Like, you know, there's no mortgage broker. They don't talk to any mortgage broker about what to do. <laughs> no. Okay. They don't talk to any, you know, they talk to, don't talk to the man in the street. They don't talk to the mm-hmm. lady in the street. They do not do that. But what's coming out of it is, first of all, they felt embarrassed by this. I'm, you know, I'm kind of putting words in their mouth, but mm-hmm. I think I'm right. In a nutshell. I think I'm yeah. right. I think they were embarrassed by this scenario where on variable rate mortgages, four out of the six big banks do not increase payments when the rate goes up. It's a yeah, static payment. You just payment. pay less principal. Intra- you pay less principal. You pay more mm-hmm. interest to pay less principal. We've talked about it many, many times before on the show. sometimes no interest at all. Right. Because you started when it was... Two point nine five. Mm-hmm. You started uh, and and you got a discount from that, so you were paying uh, one point six five. That was your interest yeah. rate. So now you're just paying fucking rent in your own house. Basically, <laughs> basically that's true. And yeah. and you know if you think about it, if you had a two thousand dollar payment back in twenty twenty one, and four hundred was going to interest, and sixteen hundred was paying off your mortgage. Mm-hmm. Now it's well after this increase, it's probably. $2,050 to interest and you're going backwards. Okay? You are renting your home. You're going, no, you're not even renting. At least if you <laughs> rent, you're paying the whole thing. Oh, your yeah. mortgage is actually growing. Your mortgage is growing. Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, and, you know, we hear all these other stories about 40 year amortization, 60 year amortization, 90 60. year amortization. All right. Oh, so Jesus. this is really important. I'm gonna, I want to nip this in the butt because we have people all the time saying, oh, these banks are crazy. They're allowing a 90 year amortization. No, they are not. You cannot. They were a, forced into no, it. No, no. It's an accident. Yeah. It's a goddamn accident. It's only for people who have these products. Mm-hmm. And that this is the bottom line to the whole thing. Nobody ever expected that you would have a 1.45, 1.65 interest rate mm-hmm. that went to 6% in 15 months. Like nobody believed no. that could happen. I mean, that's reality. It. So, but it's happened. Mm-hmm. So when you hear about these 60, 80, 90 months things, a uh, year, 60, 80, 90 year amortizations, it's just a theory. It's just a, it's just a way to express it in reality. When those mortgages renew, they have to go back to normal amortization. Yep. And by the way, you cannot go to a bank and say, yo, I want one of those 90-year amortizations. No, you're going to get laughed exist. out. Yeah. Does not exist. Now, 
the Bank of Canada has been catching, sorry, the OFSI, the regulator, mm-hmm. Office of the Superintendent of Financial Institutions, the bank regulator, they've been catching a little flack for this. Mm-hmm. Okay, like, wait a second, if you're the bank regulator, how the fuck do people have 90 year How the fuck do people's mortgages grow? How could that ever be in a legitimate contract? Like, don't you check out the contracts, regulator? Like, mm-hmm. Mr. Superintendent? Don't you check it out? Like, this is I always talk about this. This is weird. Like, when I was a kid, a superintendent was a janitor in a school. Okay? True, yes. That, that was what they were. Very but, true. But anyway, he's the superintendent. Anyway, the name's Peter Rutledge. He's not a bad guy. Pretty smart well, guy. I was always confused when I was younger watching that movie Milk when he goes out for superintendent of, of San Francisco. Yeah, they had a board of supervisors. Yeah, su- yeah, yeah the so. superintendent. I'm yeah, like, yeah. that's a janitor. What, what do you yeah. mean he wants to do that for his Sam? Fr- but then I, you know, you get older. You English language can be very confusing. <laughs> that's for sure. But they, so they've been catching flack though, because like just average con- consumers, average borrowers, average people, people in the media say, wait a minute, like you allowed this contract, you allowed a mortgage contract to exist, mm-hmm. where. You could start with a two hundred thousand dollar mortgage or a four hundred thousand dollar mortgage, and it starts to grow. Now it's four hundred one. Now it's four hundred two. Mm-hmm. How did you allow that? Like that's actually against all the rules of lending. You're not split. Mortgages have got to go down, not up. Okay. Yeah. So they caught a lot of flack for that, and you know, bottom line is they're going to make it go away. Um, they well, here's their tool. Here's what they did because theoratically they cannot tell a bank what to put in a contract. That's the theory of the no, regulator. The banks are going to do what they want to do. But the regulator, can, is the greatest tool the regulator has is this. Mm-hmm. The regulator says to the bank, okay, we see these, these products. We see these growing mortgages. We see these amortizations blowing out. We see that you're not, you got a whole, like billions, billions and billions of dollars worth of mortgages that are no longer being paid down in any meaningful way. Mm-hmm. Okay. They're no longer, they're not amortizing anymore. They're either growing or they're, just you're paying off like two bucks, okay? Yeah. Uh, which was never what we intended. And we know we can't make you change. And certainly, this is important, folks. You can never change the existing contract. Remember I talked about bilateral agreements? Mm-hmm. Nobody can get that changed. I mean, you you have the right to have that. The bank gave you that contract. It's in writing. They can't change it. But here's what the regulator did do. They said, okay. We can change the amount of capital you have to reserve. Now, I don't want to get too complicated about this, but let's just say banks have to keep a certain amount of money like really available. Like it's in short-term notes, it's in share capital, it's in um, readily accessible, easy to liquidate assets, okay? And banks don't like that. Banks don't like this to have, they have a ton of it in Canada. We have a ton, they have a ton of what's called tier one capital. Uh, very safe banking system. But if you have to retain more of this capital, they call it an increase in tier one capital, there's no profit on that. The banks don't make any money on that. Okay. So here's what they said to the banks. They said, you, every one of you who has this kind of a mortgage where they're either the, the balance is growing on the mortgage or you're not paying off sweet FA. Mm-hmm. I don't have to tell you what sweet FA is. I, Sweet okay. fuck all. That's what that okay. is. Okay. So I'm just, I get, I'm going to say. Well, there's also AF as fuck. Right. Okay. There's that. So, but the, <laughs> the bottom line is not paying off the mortgage properly the way that we intended it. We're going to say to you, bank, you've got to keep more of this capital around to deal with that risk of these growing mortgages. Mm-hmm. And that means we're going to make that product much less profitable. Now, okay. the only thing banks hate more than default, people not paying, is no profit. Oh, yeah. They <laughs> fucking hate that. They no. hate no profit. Well, okay? they're not in so, the business to lose money. So. so guess what? That was the perfect tool because all of a sudden, every bank is looking at getting rid of that product. So by next year, that product will be gone or it will be so changed as it won't. It won't look at all like it used to. No. Okay. So there will be no, by, by 2024, there will be no variable rate mortgage that can ever, ever go up. Like the, the, the balance can never increase. That'll never happen. Okay. So that product will be gone or it'll be greatly changed and, and the, this thing won't repeat itself. Again, not for people who have it already. Okay. 
Now I have a question about amortization. Sure. Somewhat on topic. So we see a lot of co-signers these days. Yep. So you've got grandma. Yep. She's 98 years old. Well, probably she probably have a hard time signing if she's 98, but Let's like, just say. she's old. Let's say she's old. Yeah, she's old. Who the fuck is giving her a 30 year AM mortgage? She's not going to be around. Well, well, she's God, a co-signer, first of all. God okay. bless. Hopefully she is, but she's, we know she's not. Either like, way, how does that work? That's a good question. Okay. Or people like in my, my age, almost 40. So I sign a mortgage at 40, 30 year AM. In theory, I'm paying that off till I'm 70. Mm-hmm. Not many mm-hmm. people besides... Yeah. Can you work till they're 70? <laughs> Very good question because like, and because we get that question. Yeah. We get that question from people who, you know, we... Like, are we they going to put, a, got, they had, gonna put a cap I, on I've this? I've had 65-year-olds say to me, well, I guess I can't get a mortgage. I'm too old. So your question is very valid, mm-hmm. okay? Here's the correct answer. In Canada, we have a constitution that says you cannot discriminate based on age well, like in any way. No, it's the law. Ageism mm-hmm. is like a artsy fartsy wokey idea, okay? <laughs> but but like I guess like, you can discriminate based on age, okay? Like people can discriminate just, okay, if you're old as fuck, we don't want you in this club, okay? Yeah. Like I mean, you know, so a guy comes to the club in a walker, you know, as a <laughs> wild club, you know, wild dance club, electronic dance music going strong inside. Uh, well, they'll allow them in certain clubs, but normally, but not that, invo- club. It normally, that, that club. That club normally not- involves a pole. O- old, <laughs> old, the- man, old man with a walker, you're not coming in this goddamn club. Okay? Let him in the club with a pole because he usually has a, a pocket full of money. But good, that's another. They might be good tippers at the ballet. <laughs> yes, that's true. Uh, so here's the deal. There's no age, there's no ability to discriminate on age in any yeah. financial institution in this country. You could be a hundred years old, mm-hmm. apply for a mortgage, they can't consider it. Mm-hmm. They can only consider the normal criteria of income, credit score, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. That's the answer. It's a great okay. question. That's the answer. But it's against it's he's against got the constitution. A thirty year M. Yep. Right? Mm-hmm. He's got, let's say, ten years left. He's now retired. Yeah. What happens on your renewal? Look, I mean, he doesn't have that income. That's anymore. true. Well, it's a big question, and you know, it's a, probably a topic for a whole other show okay. because because I want to run a show on that. I yeah. want to do a show about what's going to happen in the world we exist in today with batshit crazy house prices, very large mortgages, lose okay? your job, credit score goes down the shitter, um, that sort of stuff. What happens upon renewal? We definitely need to do a show. We're going to do a show about. Yeah. We're going to do a show about what. The problem is with forcing young people into. Re- We're going to do a whole show on that. Okay. But, but by the way, good I'll question. Drop it. Excellent I'll drop question. It. It's an excellent question. <laughs> um, and that's the answer. It's against the law. Yeah. You can't discriminate on age in this country mm-hmm. for financial products. That's it. Mm-hmm. Um, okay. So the, the, the Bank of Canada raises rates. Here's one of the really creepy parts about it mm-hmm. we have a stress test in Canada. And the stress test is 2%. Yeah. So if the rates on both fixed rates and variable rates, if a lot mm-hmm. of those rates look like 6%, the qualification is now at 8%. Okay. Like of the size of these mortgages in British Columbia and Ontario, which once again, I'll remind everybody, is half the population of Canada. Mm-hmm. Okay. Who the hell is going to qualify for a huge mortgage at 8%? You need to make like 300 grand a year. Okay. Yeah. Like it's just so, so we've got some fundamental craziness going on and out even there. Even if you do make that kind of money, what are the payments? Ah, well, it's, <laughs> yeah, it's crazy. Um, now, the question comes up with now that we've seen, you know, we've seen, this is really something to realize. It, we say, oh, it went up a quarter point. That's not so much, but realize this in six weeks, it's gone up half a percent because mm-hmm. it's two straight meetings. Gone up half a percent. Probably not going up next meeting. This probably, it's yeah, exactly. Going, please. This is probably, this may be the end of increases, but we'll see. Um, well, because now we're on point with the states, right? We're close. And it, the states is starting to think about whether they, they'll, the states will probably go another quarter. So they'll stay ahead of us. Um, but we'll see. We'll see. It's it, it, Things might be changing. Uh, but. We're where we're at, 5%, okay, 5%, 7.2 prime rate, commercial bank prime rate, mm-hmm. uh, very high fixed rates. Fixed rates are all 599, uh, test. Uh, yeah. you know, 6%. I mean, holy Jesus. Um, so hard to qualify. And there's going to be less real estate activity. Like there's going to be less homes well, there sold. Is. There already is. I think we're in July. It's always quiet in July and August, but it's extra quiet. And 
it's it's crickets so um but so let's talk about the next phase of all this which affects people every day well, not every day but like once a week once a week thousands of canadian families are getting renewal notices mm-hmm. every and we've again we've talked about it before in the show they're gonna next month like the month of august <laughs> they're gonna be really really big renewal notices i mean they're gonna go yeah. back to being like they were in the fall of 2022 so i don't know if i've expressed this properly before but i, I want to make sure I, I do express it correctly for the last 12 years until just now till the last 15 months most canadians when they got a renewal in it went up maybe a tiny bit or it stayed the same effectively because nobody, you know, if your if your rate was three one nine and now it's three two nine, you just sort of shrug and say, oh, "Not worth the work." Eh, That's you know, and hey, sometimes the rate went down. Mm-hmm. Like sometimes you had a like a three nine nine rate and it went down to three four nine. I mean, you said, "Oh, well, I'm I, I hit the jackpot." You yeah. know, I'm not gonna, I'm not going to shop. I don't need to shop. The rate went down. Ah, oh, great. I just sign here, move ahead, forget yeah. about it. Okay. Well, now. Every rate that you see will start with a five mm-hmm. or a six. Yeah. Every single one. And they're drastically different from when you signed three years, five years ago. Oh, drastically. Five years. Oh, my God. But that's a big, big difference. You mm-hmm. could have a three, six, nine, and your most of your offers are like in the sixes. Mm-hmm. Holy crap. Double. That's, that's, that's a big... Uh, your payment doesn't double, but no. your payment goes up a ton. Yeah. Your payment goes up 30%, 35%, and, 40%. Yeah. Rate maybe close to double payment because amortizing doesn't go up quite as much, but it's mm-hmm. a big jump. Okay. Huge. What to do. All right. Let's talk about what to do. Do you get that renewal notice? Cry. Drink, cry a little. Few tears. Take a day. Yeah. Don't get into the wine. Don't, don't do that. Okay. Because <laughs> when you, when you're, when you're, when you next day, you're hung over and the rate's the same. Okay, so not really. You know they have that sugar-free wine now. Oh my God! It's amazing. Oh, Jesus. All right. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Some every time I talk about wine, things go off the rails, but that, that's fine. <laughs> okay. Um. Look, what to do? All right. Two steps. Decide whether it's unmanageable. You get your renewal notice in, mm-hmm. and y- you know you see the payments, and you say, think, "Oh fuck, I just can't pay this. Yeah. It's impossible." Like I mean. You know, my husband lost his job, he's or he's got a new job that pays less, and we had a, another child, and the expenses are high, and I just, I can't do it. I just can't do it. So, here's what to do first. Go to your bank, and your bank, if you're, let's say your amortization is 20 years right now on that renewal, you're, you've been in the house for 10 years, your amortization is 20 years, your bank can push the amortization out to 30 years, pretty much on automatic. Okay. And that would reduce your payment. Now, by the way, sometimes people don't, you know, sometimes we get emails and and responses on the podcast that say, you talking about both sides of your mouth, you fat bastard. Uh, You, first of all, you say that the long amortization is terrible. And then you say people should increase their amortization to reduce their payments. You're, you're fucking bullshit, you fat fuck. Okay. Well, I may be. Yeah, you took some fucking heat on social media. That may be true. I may be a bullshitter. At the end of the day, if that's your only option, what do you do? Yeah, and I'm definitely a fat fuck. But the bottom line (laughs) is this. Bottom line is this. The some of that sixty year, ninety year, seventy year amortization stuff, it's essentially an accident. Yeah. Okay. The people who signed up didn't really understand how that variable product worked. No. Like we and just just discussed the, just the discussed. regulator. Absolutely. Yeah. So and and why do I think that's wrong? It's because you're paying off nothing. Mm-hmm. Okay. And for some people, they could easily not everybody, not everybody, but some people could afford to increase their payments so their amortization would go back to normal. Mm-hmm. Now on renewal, I've specifically said these are people who look at the change in payment and say, I can't do this. Yeah. Because that's a real thing. That can happen. And there's no sense in forcing those people out of their homes. No. And by the way, I'm not telling you that they're going to go to a 60 year amortization. Mm-hmm. I'm saying they're going to go to the maximum legal amortization of 30 years. Yeah. Now, under true, true hardship, you can actually apply to your bank. For, like if, if you just know that. I got to go higher. I can't just live with 30 years. I'm in such rough financial shape that I got to go to 35 years under special application. Remember the 30 year thing, they could do that pretty much on automatic. Yeah. Um, but the, to go beyond 35 years to 35 or 40 years, which in some mortgage products is available 40 years on emergency approval only. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, you, you may have to do that if you're in really bad shape. You don't want to lose your house. 
You don't want to move well, your there's kids. There's nowhere to go. And the rents are batshit crazy. Like the house prices are batshit crazy. Yeah. So we, we, you know, in those it's two all provinces, relative. those two provinces. So that's the first thing to do. That's phase one. But phase two, if you can sort of afford the increase, you can manage it, but you don't like it at all. Like it's yeah. pissed off. Okay. There's three words I have for you. Shop, shop, shop. You got to shop for a better rate. Now, people will say, oh, uh, we get this again on comment section all the time. We get people who say, uh, oh, uh, you are a crazy man, a crazy fat man, and uh, <laughs> no one will qualify. It's impossible. Well, yeah, mostly people do. Like I'd yeah. say, it's, it's even today with these super, super high rates, I'd, I'd say about 7% of people qualify for what's called a free transfer switch. Okay. Mm -hmm. So that means you're going to, just switch the mortgage balance just as it is. You don't increase it. It's not a refinance. You're not going to increase your mortgage. You're just going to take it from bank A to bank B or lender A to lender B. And there's essentially no cost except the cost to discharge the mortgage was about 275 give yeah, or take. Maybe okay. you know, throw an appraisal in there depending on what lender. Or maybe not. Depends on the lender. Yeah, you, it, may be, lender. it may be just a very low cost. Like I'm talking yeah. 275 bucks. Move your mortgage. Find a better rate. Just move it. Yeah. Okay. And that's why you got to shop, shop, shop. Got to shop. Okay. And you might. And then the, then the, the critics also say, oh, you're doing you're saving a small amount of money. It's not a large amount of money. So what the fuck? I mean, like if you can save in some cases a quarter percent. Mm -hmm. Well, that could be ten thousand, fifteen thousand dollars over Lettuce five years. Lettuce is fucking five dollars right now. Yeah. Save the money Save where you get money. Where for you can? I mean, we got guy. We got we got three different companies have opened up these grocery apps. I don't know if you heard about this, mm. but they opened up. They've developed grocery apps which are designed right down to the individual store, the individual grocery store. They will tell you where there's food to go, almost going bad and you can get it for half price. There's an oh, app. Shit. You can actually do that, a digital app. Hey, go run to this uh, particular Loblaws. They are offering uh, apples. Uh, they're almost they're almost fucking dead, but uh, they're half the price. You so can run eat in them there. in the next 20 get minutes. You're A-OK. Uh, you got to run there right now. Oh, and there's some meat that's going to spoil and you got to run in there and buy that for a third off. And like, okay, so if people are designing apps to save people a few bucks on each grocery item, then why wouldn't you save like $200 a month on your mortgage by you shopping? Break Just that. shop. Yeah. Like, I don't care who you shop with. Go to, if you want to start, here's a start. There's a website called Wawa. It's a weird name. Yeah, I know. W-O-W-A, yeah. Wawa. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now, Wawa, where did he get that name? I know the guy, obviously, but I, I don't know where he got the name. Anyway. It must stand for something. I don't believe it does. I mean, I mean where does all this, non where did the, 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 where did Meta come from? Where did Google come from? Who got, sure. who the, what the fuck does Google mean? Google, okay. Google. Yeah, yeah, we all, we all, now it's a real word in the English language. Okay. <laughs> Google is like a worldwide word. Yeah. But that when Sergey Brin and the other guy brought it out, all those, I guess it's 14 years ago now. Uh, what the fuck was Google? Are you fucked up? That's a, that's a nonsense name. Anyway, Wawa is probably the best place to uh, check on mortgage rates. Mm. And I'll tell you why I think it's the best, apart from me being on it, apart from not me, but apart from Butler Mortgage. Like I keep saying, Butler Mortgage is not me, uh, but Butler Mortgage has discounted mortgage rates. So, And Butler Mortgage rates appear on Wawa, and so do many others, many other competitive companies. Yeah. And the reason I recommend Wawa is versus all other rate sites, because there's several. There's uh, Rate Hub, there's Rate.ca, Rates.ca, a bunch of other rate sites, the lowest rates. Yeah. There's a bunch of other mortgage rate sites. I like Wawa for this reason. Number one, I'm on it, or Butler Mortgage is on it. And number two, it's easy. It's just easy. Main page, right there. It's right there. It's, it's boom. You can look at them. Boom. Yeah. There's a bit of solid explanation here's the here's the thing i get about like some of the other rate sites first of all a couple of them are owned by mortgage brokers so i'm not I'm, i think some of them are fair but who knows yeah a little but, biased a little biased but okay well i was 100 independent no yeah. relationship to any mortgage brokerage any any bank any nothing the next thing is you don't have to answer 35 fucking questions to see the rate yeah, you don't okay. need to give your phone number. Yeah, your phone your number. Name, I think we should run a email, credit search on your credit rating on you. And yeah, fucking and, blood type. Oh, and what blood kind of sample. house? What kind of house? Excuse me. What kind of house do you want to buy? And what kind of uh, uh what kind of uh? Well, all uh, those are shopped out to realtors. What? It's Craig, <laughs> Jesus Christ! Like, there's 35 questions before yeah. you ever get to see a rate. And and it, I think even some of them are even crazier. Like you, you type in the 35 questions and say, someone will call you and tell you about the rate. Like, fuck uh, this. Like, no, just go to Wawa. You see the rates. It's great. Okay. Now, 
That's the thing to do. Shop, shop, shop. And just a note for everyone, we're not sponsored. This is fully independent. We don't have a sponsorship from no, Lala. We're, no, fuck this no, is just no. opinion. By the way, <laughs> my pl- the plan on the, this podcast is that there will never be any ads. Never be any ads. Okay. Now, I don't know. Google might, you know, YouTube might throw in some ads someday, but we are never I don't gonna... think they can do that unless we monetize it, which we haven't. Well, I mean, someday we may monetize it, but I don't know. But like, I, I think sometimes they just throw in ads, but I don't know enough about it. I mean, yeah. like if somebody pointed out the other day, like, uh, how, how does a 66 year old do this? I mean, well, because I get all the other people to do it for me. That's how I do it. So I don't even, <laughs> I don't even pay fucking attention. But here's the deal. Uh, we don't plan on advertising. We don't no. plan on in the middle of the podcast something. Uh, uh, yes, uh, AG Greens. Uh, you need the best supplement. I love it. And we're never going to do any. We're not going to do any supplements. I think I need a wine sponsor. We're not, no, no, the wine. It always goes my... back to always hey. goes back to wine with you. Okay, hey. wait. You got wait, a wine? Wait, wait. wait. Uh, it's sponsored by Basque Zero Sugar. Oh <laughs> no. God damn it! No, I had oh, it in Jesus, there. No, 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 no. Oh, Christ! Oh, no, we're not, no, wait. because I actually shout out. Too. I for, forgot to do this at the beginning. Who was on? Who did you cheat on with me most recently? Rob? Rob Campbell. Well, thanks to Rob Campbell, we can drink on this bitch. Ah, now. No, I, I'm not drinking. I'm not drinking. I'm not drinking. It's, it's, it's a, I'm not drinking on the Shout pot. Shout out to Rob. But, thank, but right, yeah, Rob was kind enough to bring the logo beer, the shut the fuck up beer. Okay? Well, I didn't bring you shut a glass of Shut the fuck up angry mortgage beer. I mean, can't drink it. It doesn't have your face on it. Yeah, you're right. If it's not, my, if, if it's not angry, we're not drinking it. Uh, so the bottom line is, we also recommend for all renewals, fixed rate mortgages, because I'm going to say this now for the 10,000th time, variables very expensive. Mm-hmm. The discounts from Prime are way lower than they should be. Okay. They've come way off. Not a competitive discount anymore. And we just don't fucking know if Prime's going to go up again. Everybody who says, no, I think it's finished. Well, I kind of think it's finished, but I've been made a complete fucking fool of before, okay? Like, I've been so wrong about this Two shit for so ago. long. <laughs> like, I was so wrong for so fucking long. I never forget. At the beginning, when they first started raising rates, I said, well, there's no way they can go past 2% increase. <laughs> uh, fucking 4.75 increase. Like, I guess I'm a fucking idiot, okay? <laughs> like, I, and everybody I know is more or less, like 90% of people are a fucking idiot who said, yeah, I don't think it can go, it can't go past 2.5%. Uh, everything would break, okay? Well, here we are. Uh, bank, commercial bank prime is 7.2. Holy shit. <laughs> anyway, so I'm wrong a lot, which is the way most people, that's why you, it's a shitty idea to make predictions. It's a crap business. But... Yeah, what we hope for, what we believe in, is that there's a cycle to every business. Every business has a cycle, up and down, whatever. Like, you know, some some days the, the beef is more expensive than others. The hamburger is sure. more expensive than others. Yeah. There's just a cycle to things. Sometimes the gasoline is more expensive than others. It generally goes up. But there's some months it's lower. Oh, geez, Louise. And it, that's a good uh, comparison to the, the gas prices. Years ago, I think when I first started dri- driving, that's when these crazy gas prices yeah. started. Yeah. And I'm, well, I'm not going to drive my car, this and that. Well, guess what, guys? You, you drive in and you pay whatever's on the fucking side. Yeah, we, 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 we all didn't stop driving. We're not driving our bikes. We might drive we just, less. We might drive a little less. but Not you know. even. Everyone yeah. just got used to it. We don't, I don't see a million people on their bicycles going to work. That's what everyone said they were going to do. I'm going to ride my bike. I'm going to yeah. Get an e-bike. Don't, don't Guess, see listen, that, yeah. we live in Canada. It's fucking cold. It's raining. It's, we have it's weather. Snowing. We have fucking. Yeah. It's a, it's You're a, not going to do that. Difficult... You're just going to pay it and shut the fuck up. Oh, it's a difficult <laughs> six months of the year every year. Okay. Like it just mm-hmm. is. Oh, yeah. No. So we believe there is a belief in a business cycle. And yeah. here's the truth rates were very, very low, too low. That's another they were whole obscenely show. low. It Seen, was too. They call it the zero no. interest rate program. Okay, it was so. just, they, no, it was a, it's not. So good. now we're high. Okay. It's now very we're high, obscenely high. Very high. Okay. <laughs> and eventually it will turn. Now, whether it's next year or the following year, I don't know. Can you do your Tiff Macklin voice, but as the, the Goldilocks and the Three Bears? Too low. Okay. Too yeah. High. <laughs> We should be very prudent in reviewing the <laughs> rates over the course. We should carefully analyze inflation, and uh, we would re- become data dependent on exactly where our future decisions will be. Okay, he doesn't actually sound like that, but this rate is too I, low. This rate is too high. I, this rate is just, just right. This is just, this is just right. Okay. <laughs> so, <laughs> anyway, here's the thing. Simple idea. In sometime in the next two years. 
interest mortgage mortgage interest will be lower. Yeah, that's the concept. So if you take a two or three year mortgage, they say, well, why am I taking a three? If I'm taking two, because we really aren't fucking sure. And the three year rate is less than the two year rate by nearly half a percent yeah. in general. Okay, so we're just trying to give some decent advice. This is what we believe. So if you renew, by the way, and when to shop for your renewal. If it's a year from now, don't shop. Leave it alone. Next important thing, if the bank calls you and says, we think you should blend. We think it's, it goes, it's going to go way up in a year. We think you should be very scared. You have 3.49 now, and we offer you a blended rate special if you go a year early. Mm. A year early? What the fuck? Uh, but, but we'll give you a blended rate special at 5.19, which you should probably take because it might be so much higher. It might be 8% in a year, which is all bullshit. If you got a low rate, just keep it. Now, when should you should really start shopping? Simple, simple, simple. Between 120 days and 90 days before your renewal date. Well, so you can't do anything with you before 120 days. Yeah, and, and that's that's the time to yeah. shop. If you got you've all got lower rates now, don't trade up to a higher rate. Uh-huh. Wait till you're close and then switch on the day. But shop, shop, shop. Okay. Now, new topic. And this is something that happened this week, and it ties into uh, something that went on in social media, but. Here's something that just scares the fuck out of me, okay? Um, even though I'm so old, it probably won't affect me but because I'll just be dead. But uh, but if, if, and sometimes people say, well, you're not that old. You're only just in your 60s. Take a fucking close look at me, okay? People like me don't make you're it to 90, fine. all right? That's just the way it goes. But anyway, here's something that's really starting to get to me. And I'll give you the reasons, but... We're not, we're building less houses. We're starting less houses. We're applying for less houses. Like, I think in the last six months, we have reached the lowest point in Canada, the whole country, the lowest point of new build applications in 15 years. Yeah, and we're bringing in more people than ever. A million people coming, fewer houses getting built, and that's accelerating the wrong way. That's going in the wrong direction. Like it's, yeah. we're going to have fewer housing starts. We had fewer housing starts in 22 than 21. We're going to have fewer housing starts by maybe a lot in 2023. And we're probably going to have even lower housing starts in 2024. And yet the government promises they will bring in minimally another half a million people in 2024. Mm-hmm. What? Oh, this is so horrible. Is this it? Is this no, it? No, no, this isn't it. Oh, I, guess, okay. I gave even worse ones for, the, for oh, later. Shit. Okay. So... Less homes being started, less potential to solve this problem, less housing supply in an acute crisis. Because listen, this is how this works. If you want to build a home in a, a, a major urban area or even a major, you know, in a province where there's a lot of people coming, mm-hmm. okay, like in, in BC and Alberta, better in Alberta, but in BC and Ontario, and they're all municip- municipal approvals, like the, the municipality, the town, the city, somebody, they're the approval process. But you have the, the province tied in as well for new whole new subdivisions. Like if you're going to build a whole new town, yeah. a whole new big area, open it up. Now, if you're a developer, you need about a, about a, you know, a, a six or seven year timeline because it's going to take you like, Six or so, it's going to take you like five years to get through all the approvals for subdivision. Like, I'm not talking building one house. I'm talking yeah. about, I'm talking about, you know, build, building 800 houses, okay, yeah. or 1600 houses, whatever the number is. It's a long, long time to get those approvals. And then when you finally, then you have to pre sell it. Like, you find somebody who wants to buy your, mm-hmm. so here, put 10, put 20% down, big deposit, and you're going to own that lot, and we're going to build you this house, and you sign off on the plans and the extras and the whole nine yards. It usually takes about two years. About another 18 months to two years, <laughs> yeah. yeah. So it's a long, long time. They'll tell you a year, but it'll They'll be closer to two. It's never a year. It's never going to be a year. Yeah. Now, let's take the example of a condo, a condo tower, like a like a 30-story tower, 40-story tower. That's like a fucking 11, 12-year timeline. Yeah. Okay? Like, by the time you got the permits, done the studies, done the environmental, done the archaeological, done I can't even... There's so many fucking things you got to do in this town now, or any town, any place in, in most of Canada to get uh, a, a condo tower built. Mm-hmm. And then you got to pre-sell it. So you sell all these units again. You're collecting 10 or 20% down payment from the from the consumer. And... Then it takes, in a condo, it takes like six years to build from the time the backhoe goes in the ground to the time people actually start to move in. And if you're a developer and you are looking at these huge timelines 
and this incredible cost. Well, number one, it used to be, prime rate used to be 2.95. So you got to carry a lot of costs when, you know, if you're sitting there for waiting all that for that time, yeah. you got to buy the land, right? I mean, some, yes, some people already own the land. Some big developers have held the land for 20 years, but a lot, but nobody builds with all cash. It's ridiculous because you got to have, you got to go on to the next one. So you have to build with credit. Yeah. So if, if, if the freaking cost of credit has gone from 3% to 8 or 9%, you may not be able to build anything, okay? You may just say, well, I put everything on pause. I can't live with these rates because the land is super expensive. The construction costs gone up 50%. The trades are becoming unavailable. And now I can't afford the, the cost of the financing, okay? Mm -hmm. So less and less new homes being permitted. Mm -hmm. There's new, less fewer housing starts. That's a fucking disaster if we're bringing in more and more people. It's oh, yeah, literally yeah. insane, which brings me to, we're not we're not going to make this a feature, okay. which brings me to shitty outcome of the month. Okay, like yeah. we have a housing minister, his name is Minister Hussein, and again I've got to keep emphasizing this over and over and over. I'm not mad at anybody personally. I don't think people are evil. I don't. No matter how much people hate the government, no matter how much people hate politicians, I think almost all of them are just people who'd like to do good. Okay, mm -hmm. I don't think there's any evildoers, or there may be one or two, who knows, I don't know. There's probably a few sons of bitches and evil people in it. But mostly they just want to do good. And But a lot of the times they have the wrong ideas, okay? But I am going to single this Minister of Housing, Minister Hussein, out because he did a crazy, crazy thing this week. The funny part is it wasn't really him. Mm -hmm. If you understand how the Canadian government works at the federal level, like the, the Ottawa government, no cabinet minister has any power, really. They're just, they just have a department to run. Mm -hmm. Every policy issue originates in something called the PMO, the Prime Minister's Office. So, and, and by the way, the Prime Minister's Justin Trudeau, but he's not even actually involved in half the thing his office does because it's just a big, big thing. And he's, you know, he's flying around, shaking hands with people. And, yeah, he can't do know, everything. Like the, the sort of, the thing about government now is, particularly this government, is it's kind of an eternal campaign mode. But there's like people inside that office, the PMO, the Prime Minister's office, who they decide every policy thing. They decide every major output to the public. Like if they, like, so when Minister Hussein put a, article says he wrote an article and put it in the national post about housing he really didn't like he <laughs> might have sent it but somebody in the prime minister's office wrote it okay he glanced it he might have looked at it <laughs> so i don't even blame him to a certain extent uh, I, I sort of blame him because there's got to be a moment where you can say fuck no i'm not going to put my name on this like yeah. I, I don't give a fuck what you say okay i mean i want to be a team player i know it's a politics team sport but this is too fucking wild okay i don't want to do it but he didn't and and he put this thing, article out. So the article says that Pierre Polyev and the conservatives are all wrong about housing. Mm -hmm. They're doing nothing. And every proposal they have is shit. Okay. And in fact, I and the federal government for the last nearly going to be nine years soon, the federal government has done everything right on housing. We are mm -hmm. the good guys and we have a great plan. And for the last Eight or nine years, we've been doing great things, and the municipalities are all great, okay? And, and we want to work with municipalities, and we are going to solve the housing problem. Holy fuck! You've had it for nine years almost. It's gotten fucking worse every fucking year. The prices have gone through the roof, and now the fucking supply is dropping. You're the minister of housing. You run out and say, well, we're, we're going to build uh, 28 units in Kitchener-Waterloo of low-income housing. Yeah, good on pat my shoulder. Like... No, fuck no. We got less housing starts in 2022, less housing starts in 2023, probably even more worse situation in 2024. And you're the housing minister saying you're doing a great job. Fuck you. You're not doing a great job. You're doing a fucking <laughs> terrible job. Fucking terrible. And yet there you are boasting. Oh, we have the, we are on the right path. Uh, these conservatives of Pierre Polyev. Does, I don't actually know if Pierre Polyev is right or wrong. I can't give you that answer. But fuck me. You are wrong. You've done a shitty, shitty job. OK, I don't think you're a bad guy, but you've done a shitty, shitty job. Everything's wrong about housing oh in most of Canada. Rents are through the roof. People are in a bad situation. And the construction cost, you've never even addressed the important things like the construction costs that have gone crazy. These high rates that prevent developers from getting going. All of these fucking 
serious problems that run into the future. They run into the next three or four or five years, 10 years. You, you know, you, you can't solve a housing crisis. Oh, there's you, you no. Instantly. Immediate, yeah, there's no immediate solution. There's no immediate solutions. And you're saying you're doing a great job. Minister is saying, you're doing a shit job. Like, it's <laughs> shit. It's terrible. And you're saying you're doing great. I mean, I don't, like I said, I don't care who's right in this thing, but I know you're wrong. You're fucking wrong. Okay. <laughs> fucking stop it. I mean, stop saying you're doing a good job. Stop boasting. Doing shit. Okay. End of rant. All right. Now, our favorite, uh, but it's gonna, I'm going to slide into another awful thing that is part of housing. And so it sort of falls under him, although not completely. Absolutely awful. We're going to make this our favorite part of the program. What the actual fuck is here. So what the actual fuck is wrong with this situation? So correctly, because I believe in this deeply correctly, Canada has got to welcome refugees from other countries who are in terrible dire straits. Definitely. Okay. Whether it's people from the Ukraine, whether it's people from, whether it's, uh, LGBTQ people, like I'm not going to learn the new acronym. Like I'm not, the, the acronym for LGBT is grown out to like 37 letters. I just can't do it. Okay. I'm too old. I'm, I'm not smart enough. But we welcome these people from other countries where they're persecuted in their own company. Their lives are in danger and we, we, we welcome them here because we need to. Mm-hmm. And, and people who are in, in, you know, we just have to accept that we're a welcoming country to people who are in bad situations. Yeah, okay? And it's awesome. Or at least it should be. At least it should be. But what? the actual fuck like we have refugees sleeping in parks okay by the way they're not allowed to work and you know, that's against the rules for the work yeah. so we gotta house them okay we gotta look after them yeah. because they gotta welcome go through the refugee to process. our country you now get to sleep on the fucking street and you're, it's july you're, you're it's july in toronto and it's like 180 degrees outside okay, okay what's that gonna be like in december and january like what is wrong with this country? We can't organize our way out of a fucking paper We've bag. We've talked about this okay? over and over and over again. And it's fun. we just talked about what last week? Yeah. The week before? Week before again. And what's on the fucking news? The guy's out there. Where did you come from? Well, we just came over from da da da. Sleeping on the street. No place it's, to sleep. It's been raining, so they had all their blankets. Ugh, Jesus. To, to dry it. It's disgusting. Like, not that. Of course, we want to help people, but is this helping? Well, I guess, I guess it's, yeah, better, it's, it's better worse than, it's better over than, there. It's better than losing your life. Okay? Yeah, it's but, murder. But Jesus God Christ. damn it. Like, we got to be more, or, there's got to be a way to be more organized, okay? Listen, schools are out. Open up the gyms. Do something. Like, do something. Like, just get off your ass and fix it, okay? And then, of course, we have, you know, people who say, um, oh, it's such a complicated problem, huh? How how will we fix it? But it's easy for you to say we can fix it, but we don't know how to. Fi- well, if you don't know how to fix it, get the fuck out and we'll find somebody who does. Okay, like seriously, I'm, I'm I I hate communism. I hate the Chinese government. But when they need to build something, somehow in a weekend it gets fucking built. Build a hospital in the fucking weekend. Okay, like we used to be able to do great things in this country. We used to be able to uh, build things, hurry up, make it happen, get some experts in, get some dynamic people in, mm. make fixes happen uh no we can't do that anymore refugees fleeing the further lives from other countries we don't allow them to work so they can't which is just the rules they can't rent so they have to sleep in a park okay anyway mr hussein refugee problem no housing starts in, in pro- lower housing starts all fucked up like, we got to do better. We got to find a way to do better. That's okay. crazy. So, till next week. Oh, I forgot at the opening of the show, I forgot to say who we are. No, so, so I better say it again. I'm Ron Butler. She's Natalie Butler for the crazy nitpickers out in uh, social media who say we got to describe who we are every time. <laughs> so, and we'll be back. Back next week. Another edition of Angry Mortgage. Cheers. If you like the pod, well, don't just sit there. Go to YouTube, Apple, Spotify, and all the other ones and like the pod. And don't forget to subscribe so we can keep being angry at mortgages and swearing about mortgages. Angry Mortgage could use your support.